It's April 26, 2018, and there are currently no autonomous cars available for sale to the public. Tesla, at present, doesn't make autonomous cars. They aren't self-driving. They aren't even partially self-driving. To people who have been keeping up with things, none of those statements are going to be new or surprising. Others, however, may find them to be very surprising. That's likely due to the way in which the current crop of advanced driver assistance systems like Tesla's autopilot and its capabilities are portrayed in various media outlets. So let's talk about what those capabilities actually are, what your role is as a driver when using said systems, and how a lack of clear language may have gotten us here in the first place. I'll primarily be focusing on Tesla's autopilot in this video since it's arguably one of the most capable systems available and is more prevalent than its nearest peer, GM Super Cruise, which is only available in the Cadillac CT6 at present. Also, Autopilot happens to be the system that I have the most experience with. Right now, the capabilities and limitations of Tesla's Autopilot can be broken up into two primary categories. The older, more limited Hardware 1 Autopilot and the newer Hardware 2 Autopilot, uh, which Tesla is continuing to expand the capabilities of through over-the-air software updates. But in general, let's talk about some of the limitations of these two systems. Fundamentally, Autopilot is the combination of traffic aware cruise control, TAC, and a fancy lane keeping assist that can change lanes when instructed, called Auto Seer. It's important to note that TAC can be used independent of Auto Steer, but the overall system capabilities are fairly limited. Right now, Autopilot is purely reactive in how it operates. It doesn't detect and avoid road hazards like road damage, so deep potholes, that sort of stuff, and it also doesn't do a very good job of detecting uh, road debris. There are some types of road debris that Autopilot will pick up with the radar, and then it'll provide you with a warning chime, but it's, it's not something that it's going to actively avoid for the most part. It doesn't reliably detect stopped vehicles, and this is something that isn't unique to Autopilot, that's actually fairly common uh, across traffic or cruise control systems. If a vehicle has already been identified by Autopilot and slows to a stop after it had already been identified, then the system usually responds appropriately by slowing down and, and then eventually stopping. If a vehicle, however, wasn't identified before it came to a stop, then whether or not the car reacts appropriately is kind of a toss-up. Most of the time, it won't react. Hardware 1 Autopilot doesn't have the sensors necessary to establish whether a lane change is safe. Hardware 2 Autopilot, on the other hand, does have the sensors which could potentially allow it to establish whether a lane change is safe, but that functionality has not been pushed out yet. Let's see, what else? Autopilot doesn't react to stop signs or stop lights or railroad crossings or construction zones or anything like that. That's up to you as the driver to intervene as necessary. Didn't see it. It's easily confused by stacked lane markings and doesn't always identify certain types of lane markings correctly, like BOTS dots, you know, the little plastic dots in the road. Generally, with some limited exceptions for hardware too, Autopilot doesn't negotiate uh, highway exits or interchanges, and there doesn't seem to really be any fusion between the navigation system and Autopilot as of yet. Autopilot doesn't reliably respond to adjacent vehicles wandering in their lanes and perhaps encroaching upon yours. Sometimes the ultrasonic sensors will pick up the other vehicle and will cause your car to move over, but it's not something you can count on. Autopilot also doesn't avoid sitting in other drivers' blind spots and usually requires intervention whenever there is either merging or splitting traffic. So I'm sure that at this point some of you are wondering if that's a partial list of the things Autopilot can't do, what can it do? Well, Autopilot through TAC maintains a user-defined following distance uh, that is relative to the vehicle's speed within a user-defined speed ceiling. Autopilot through auto steer centers the vehicle in its lane and attempts to maintain a centered position as road markings change, dropping into a follow mode if road markings are no longer detected. It can execute user-initiated lane change maneuvers, which I'll talk more about later. And then there are two features of the autopilot system that come standard, automatic emergency braking, which is meant to reduce the energy of an impending collision, not necessarily bring you to a stop and avoid the collision, and forward collision alert, which will sound a chime to let the driver know that the driver needs to act immediately because there is an impending collision. Now, Autopilot does have a few other features like their parking assist and that sort of stuff, but those aren't really relevant to the conversation here. So if that's all it does, then why should people use it and what's the driver's role? Well, the primary benefit of the system is to reduce driver workload, which in turn reduces driver fatigue and frees the driver to focus more on situational awareness. There's a surprising amount of processing going on in the brain to make the constant small accelerator and steering inputs required to maintain distance and lane center when you're driving manually. Advanced driver assistance systems free the driver from having to make those continual inputs, and, you know, until you try it, it's, it's easy to not realize just how much work you're doing. 
Speaking of traffic-aware cruise control, the benefits of it are pretty well known and pretty well proven at this point. It increases safety in dense traffic situations, especially stop and go, by helping to prevent collisions caused by sudden changes in traffic speed. Despite autopilot being a serious system, I often find myself explaining it as kind of a teamwork mode, where the system is attempting to operate within the parameters you've defined, while you, the driver, maintains situational awareness and monitors the system's performance. During operation, keeping your hands on the wheel at all times, as Tesla suggests, actually makes it far easier to detect the inputs that auto steer is making, reconcile those inputs with what you perceive to be the correct inputs, and quickly intervene if necessary in a way that reduces the likelihood of overcorrection. I bring up overcorrection here because auto steer can require a little extra initial force to override if you're trying to override it through steering input, which makes overcorrection more likely if you're having to quickly move your hands from a resting position onto the wheel to then correct the direction of the car. Leaving your hands on the wheel, however, allows you to apply pressure against auto steer's inputs, resulting in a more graceful disengagement when auto steer continues with an incorrect input it's also more comfortable for your passengers. It's important to note that if you disengage auto steer via steering wheel input, it doesn't disengage tack, so your traffic aware cruise control is still running. The importance of driver attention when using autopilot becomes very clear when you attempt to initiate a lane change, because the driver has to perform the appropriate checks to ensure that the lane change is safe. The ultrasonic sensors on the car, especially if we're talking hardware one, are not adequate for detecting cars that are closing at high speed. So it may be able to identify, you know, the car that's next to you, but if there's a car coming up behind you at high speed in the adjacent lane, it won't know. And this is where the difference between an automated system and an autonomous system comes into play. An automated system is one that is executing commands that are given to it by the user and operating within the parameters that are defined by the user. An autonomous system is a system that's capable of making command decisions without input by the user. In the case of Tesla Autopilot, at present, the driver is in control of all systems and is the one responsible for making all command decisions. It's an automated system. As an example, let's look at the Autopilot lane change procedure. When you move the turn signal stock to initiate a lane change, you're commanding the vehicle to change lanes, provided that there's no vehicle detected immediately next to you. The system doesn't check safety beyond that condition, doesn't judge the closing speed of traffic in the target lane, and may not detect other vehicles attempting to move into the same space. It's simply doing what you told it to do. Similarly, when you activate Traffic Aware Cruise Control, the system attempts to stay as close to the speed ceiling that you have set while not violating the following distance rules that you've defined. There are no decisions or judgment calls being made by the system. It's simply checking the following distance and then reconciling its current following distance and speed with the rules that have been set. Similarly, aircraft autopilots, which range from simple systems that maintain airspeed under heading to very advanced systems that can land an aircraft automatically, are fundamentally automated systems. The pilot enters in commands like maintain this airspeed, maintain a particular altitude, follow a given waypoint route, initiate automated landing, stuff like that, and the aircraft responds by following those commands within the confines of its programming. In many ways, aircraft autopilot is significantly less technologically sophisticated than advanced driver assistance systems like Tesla's Autopilot or GM's Super Cruise. There's no image recognition, no neural nets, and no learning algorithms involved. The systems aren't capable of handling unusual situations where any sort of command decision needs to be made. However, the big area where aircraft autopilot differs from a system like Tesla's Autopilot is in the types of tasks that the pilot can do while autopilot is engaged. Unless the aircraft is in a high traffic area, even the simplest autopilot system will allow the pilot to do things like pour over maps for an extended period of time. They can get away with this sort of thing safely because the lack of obstacles in the space that they're operating in uh, results in it being orders of magnitude easier to maintain sufficient situational awareness to operate the plane safely. Anyway, these distinctions are important to understand because using the wrong terminology, like referring to Tesla's autopilot system as an autonomous system, can lead people to misunderstand what the system's capabilities and limitations are and result in, well, more irresponsible usage of the systems. One thing I want to make very clear is that the reason Tesla pops up a dialog full of warnings prior to enabling autopilot for the first time is not just a lawyer-driven CYA statement. It's a description of the user's role and responsibilities as designed by the system's engineers. It's not something to treat as just your typical legal disclaimer and move on. There are elements to it which help inform you of what your responsibilities are, and that information is important. 
Sadly, Tesla doesn't do a very good job conveying that importance to new owners when they're taking delivery of their cars. In fact, I think Tesla should spend a little more time to give new owners uh, like a safety orientation for autopilot so they understand what its limitations really are and how to use it safely. Due to the relative immaturity of driver assistance features, there are a lot of open questions about how these systems influence driver behavior. For example, do these advanced driver assistance features cause already safe drivers to take more risks than they otherwise would? I haven't really been able to find adequate research to know the answer to this, but my impression is that already safe drivers will continue with safe driving habits um, and will operate within the limitations of the systems that their cars are equipped with. Similarly, there's a percentage of drivers who drive distracted already, using their phone, reading books, looking at newspapers or whatever, without any driver assistance systems. This group would presumably continue their behavior when presented with driver assistance features, but would the attention paid to the task of driving decrease further with these systems? Or would the attention splits stay about the same, which would cause these systems to mitigate some of the risk introduced by the choices these drivers are making? There's been some research which attempts to investigate these questions, I've put some links down below, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done to clearly understand how these systems will influence the behavior of different types of driver. For better or worse, the group with the most data to pull from to answer these questions and guide system design may end up being Tesla. After all, we don't actually know yet what their plans are for the interior camera of the Model 3 or whether that feature will find its way to the Model S and X. Only time will tell there. Anyway, that's enough lecturing from me. I want to know what you think about these advanced driver assist systems and the direction you'd like to see their development go. What sorts of UI changes would you like to see happen or safety features rolled in? Uh, do you feel that people would be more or less distracted with them as these systems become more prevalent? Have you run across any interesting research on the topic that you'd like to share? As usual with these Let's Talk videos, go ahead and post that in the comments below. I'll be active in the comments section. Let's have an interesting discussion. Oh, and for anyone who missed the announcement last week, uh, t-shirts are available now. We've got the Squid design as well as others like the, uh, the gas pumps of the future design that I wore to the meetup at Hawthorne a few weeks ago. Um, and there's like a yacht floor design and a the fun little design for Model X owners. Uh, go ahead and hit the link in the comments section to head over to my Teespring store if you're interested in getting a shirt. And with that said, I'll see you later.